Welcome to Everything Sports with me, Cade Matsuzaki, your host. I will be giving you the rundown on all national sports news and, of course, everything about local sports here in Nebraska. Welcome to today's show of Everything Sports. We are live from Omaha, Nebraska, where it's a brisk, wintry day with flurries currently coming down. In today's show, I want to kick things off with some local hoops. The Huskers men basketball team is just getting back into the groove of things after having a month off due to COVID. Nebraska had to pause team activities on January 11th, and nine players on the team had COVID this season, along with three staff members, including head coach Fred Hoiberg. Coach Hoiberg, who has heart issues, was pretty scared by the chest pain caused by COVID. Hoiberg was born with an abnormal aortic valve and had surgeries in 2005 and 2015, with the first one in 2005 ending his NBA playing career. He has now recovered from the virus, though, and all the tests have come back normal. The team resumed play last Saturday the 6th and faced a tough team of Michigan State. Michigan State beat Nebraska by a score of 66-56. to it had to have felt good to finally get back out there on the court playing again. And for the fans, it was good seeing them out there playing. From home, of course. Nebraska has had a rough year and has lost nine straight games and hasn't won a conference game yet this year. In fact, they have a 26-game losing streak in the Big Ten Conference. But that losing streak was finally snapped this last Sunday as they defeated Penn State by one point of a score of 62-61. to Snapping the long game losing streak had to be a good Valentine's Day gift for the team. In the previous game, before defeating Penn State, the Huskers took Illinois, who was number 5 in the country, to overtime, and lost a heartbreaker in overtime. So it had to feel good finally getting that first conference win of the season. The Huskers face off a tough Maryland team this Wednesday and will try to get another tally in the win column. In other local basketball news, Creighton is having a pretty good season. They're currently number 14 in the nation. They're also coming off a strong performance against Villanova, who is number 10 in the nation right now. Creighton defeated Villanova by nearly 20 last Saturday. Many college basketball analysts and bracketologists are predicting Creighton to make a deep run in the March Madness tournament. In Creighton's next matchup, they will face DePaul on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Next up on today's show, I want to talk a little bit about Husker football. <laughs> It wouldn't be very professional of me to talk about local Nebraskan sports and not bring up Husker football. So on that note, as many Nebraskans know, last season was another letdown under Scott Frost, who is now entering his fourth season as head coach at Nebraska. And the struggles continue to pile up as the team lost arguably their best player, Wondell Robinson, who entered the transfer portal and will likely play for his hometown of Kentucky. The Huskers also lost their up-and-comer quarterback of Luke McCaffrey to the transfer portal as well and he will not be returning to the Huskers. Scott Frost's team hasn't been what fans expected when he became the head coach, but on a positive note, he has done a good job recruiting. In all of his first four seasons at Nebraska, he's done a good job nationally at landing good recruits and has been ranked top 50 in recruiting every single year so far. And for the next season, Frost has landed some good mentionable recruits, as the Huskers landed Marquis Stepp, who is a transfer from USC, who has some strong upside and potential. Step adds to Frost's backfield and another good running back to his depth chart. Scott Frost and his Huskers will resume play August 28th against Illinois, which is actually supposed to be played in Ireland this year. We will just have to wait and see what the season has in store for Scott Frost and the Huskers. On a national level, there has been some big sports news worth talking about. First, on the largest national scale in the sports world, the Super Bowl 55 happened earlier this month as Tom Brady took home his 7th Super Bowl ring and his 10th Super Bowl appearance facing off against rising star of the league, Patrick Mahomes. Brady doing Brady things also received Super Bowl MVP from that game. Many sports fans consider Brady to be the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And this accomplishment definitely supports that statement. Also considering that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers haven't been good in years and haven't made the playoffs since 2007. Brady really turned that team around. Brady also announced on social media a couple days after winning the Super Bowl that he will be coming back and looking to win his 8th Super Bowl at 43 years old. In other Brady news, at the Super Bowl ceremony celebration in Tampa Bay, Brady was seen having a great time and was perceived to be drunk in pictures and videos as he could hardly walk on his own without assistance. But hey, it was another big accomplishment for Brady and celebrating it is completely reasonable. Brady was also seen throwing the Super Bowl trophy across water from one boat to another boat at the celebration. I guess when you win seven Super Bowl rings, you can throw it across water from boat to boat. Tampa Bay and Brady are having quite fun right about now. In other sports news in the NFL, league star and multi-defensive player of the year winner, J.J. Watt, announced that he won't be returning to play for his team for many years 
the Houston Texans, as they mutually agreed to part ways. It is uncertain where he will go, but several Super Bowl contender teams are certainly options for him, as they all would love to add him to their team. In other sports news outside of football, the Australian Open just ended recently, as Serena Williams playing in her 39th Grand Slam at 39 years old looked to win her 24th Grand Slam title. But unfortunately, she lost to a promising young star, Naomi Osaka, in the semis. Osaka, who is just 23 years old, has now won four Grand Slam titles. She has also never lost in the finals. As Serena Williams' incredible tennis career comes to an end, it looks like Naomi Osaka looks like she will be the face of tennis for quite some time now. Transitioning over to the NBA, the league and commissioner Adam Silver announced that they will be hosting its annual All-Star Game. There was some controversy on whether or not the NBA should have this game this year because of COVID and its restrictions, but the game will happen on March 7th. The All-Star Game is usually a halfway point in the long season for the players and serves as a break and a time to have some fun in the city the game is hosted in. This year, it is in Atlanta. But due to COVID, the players are only allowed to bring a limited number of family members who must be tested regularly for COVID-19. And the players and their guests will not be allowed to leave the players' hotels for any reason except the all-star activities at the arena. The NBA also noted any player participating in the events must travel to Atlanta via private transportation on March 6, and they must leave right after the game ends and undergo daily testing. It appears that the NBA is still being very cautious about COVID-19. League star LeBron James told reporters, quote, I have zero energy and zero excitement about an all-star game this year. I don't even understand why we're having an all-star game. This doesn't really look good for the NBA and the all-star game and league commissioner Adam Silver, as the league star LeBron James, along with many other stars of the league, are really against the all-star game this year. In sort of similar sports news, college basketball's famous tournament, March Madness, will be held in Indiana this year and is scheduled to begin March 18th. And up to 25% of fan capacity will be allowed in the arenas for the 2021 men's basketball tournament for all rounds of March Madness. For many basketball fans, this is one of the best times of the year, March Madness. Falling under the topic of college sports as well, the College Football Championship Subdivision, the FCS, season began this past weekend after a long delay because of the pandemic. The FCS features smaller schools like South Dakota State and McNeese State and other smaller colleges, but they're still all Division I schools. It's pretty much unheard of for college football to be played in spring, but due to COVID-19, everything is different now. The FCS includes the coronavirus pandemic protocols that have become familiar in all college sports. The protocols include virus testing, contact tracing, isolation, and quarantines, all of which are very fun stuff. The FCS itself has also been fractured by conflicts over how to proceed during a pandemic. Since about March 2020, life as we knew it changed. But I think it's fair to say that we're all grateful to be alive and thankful for it as well. I know sports fans like me are also very thankful that sports are still being played. Thank you for listening to Everything Sports Nationally and Locally with your host, Cade Matsuzaki. Till next time.